Welcome to the Finite Mathematics Podcast. In this and the next few episodes, I want to focus on how to use Excel to solve some problems that involve compounding. Now, today's video, we want to set up a basic template that emulates what we did with the TI calculator, and we'll use this template in the succeeding videos. Now, a word about the formatting templates. Now, notice I left some blank rows here at the top. Now, the purpose of these rows is to put in some identifying information, uh, your name, date, maybe lab number, a short description of what this project or what this template does. And the whole point is that when you come back and look at this in a month or two or sometime later, you'll have a clue as to what all these numbers mean. Now, a second design uh, feature is that notice I put labels over here in column A. Now, the calculations will occur in column B. And the point is that the labels will give you a hint as to what the numbers in column B actually stand for. All right, so now let's take a look. Remember the problem that we had with the TI? It was a savings account that had uh, $1,000 in it at an annual rate of 6%, and we wanted to see what's it going to be worth in two years. Okay, so the labels here are input labels that we've decided on, or I've decided on, is the deposit amount. Okay, so that we know is going to be $1,000. I'll put in 1000 right now. The second one that we have control over was the rate per year. Now, a word of warning here, when we put in the rate per year, we want to put it in as a decimal. So I put in 0 0.06, as opposed to in the TVM solver, you would just write 6 because it was already, it wanted the percent, so you don't want it to confuse uh, 0.06, uh, which is the decimal form of 6% with 6, which would be uh, 600%. Now, this third uh, row here is the compounding periods per year. So our original problem was going to be monthly, so we would use 12, because there are 12 months in a year, and then we wanted to find out the value after two years, so I'd enter 2 here for the number of years involved. Okay, so that is our input data, and this is the stuff that we can change. Now, what about the formulas that make things work? Well, a couple of them are pretty simple. I could actually just combine it all into a single formula, but I think I'd rather pull it out so you can see the different parts. Well, what about the total number of periods? Well, obviously, there's 24 months and two years, but let's do it with a formula in case we change the input data. So I start with an equal sign to tell it's going to be a formula. And there's 12 months a year, so I can click that. Now I want to multiply that. Now if you haven't done this before, the multiplication is Shift-8, a little star. And then two years, click on the 2, hit Enter, and then it gives us the 24. Now, what about the rate per period? Again, with a monthly rate, if the annual rate is 6%, it's just going to be 0.06 over 12, half a percent. But Let's uh, let a formula do it so we don't have to worry about all of that arithmetic if the numbers get uh, more complicated. So we, again, we start with equal 0 0.06 divided by the 12, 12 months in a year, and that gives us that half a percent. Now, how do we implement the formula for the future value? Uh, well, recall how we did it when we were using the calculator we would like to take the present value, or the deposit in this case, we would multiply it, remember that's the shift 8, times a, a factor here. Well, how do we get that factor? Well, we start with the parentheses. Parentheses are important here. And it's going to be 1 plus what? Well, when we were doing it with the calculator, we took the annual rate and divided it by 12. Well, we already did that. We called that the rate per period. So I can actually just click on that rate per period, close my parentheses, and now what did we do with that? Well, we raised that to the total number of periods. So how do you get an exponent? Well, that's the Shift-6 key, a little caret up there, and the total number of periods was 24. Hit Enter. 
and that gives us the 1127 16 just like when we calculated it with the calculator now to show you the advantages of this and why we didn't want to hard wire in if I took the rate and put point oh or the rate and divided it by 12 manually let's do some other things here supposing I wanted to change this from figure out the value after five years instead of just two years I could just change my input data to five and it gives me whatever the result is there. okay now let's go back to two now suppose uh, when we were doing it with the calculator setup in that video we changed this from a uh, monthly rate to a daily rate so I can just go back and change the 12 to 365 and lo and behold you see it's going to immediately calculate it gives us our 112749 just like it did with the calculator but notice I didn't have to fool around and, and figure out all of the rate per period and stuff like that all of these calculations were done automatically well all right this is the basic template that we're going to use in other uh, Excel videos for compounding. Uh, we'll see other templates designed in the same way uh, in some later videos. Thanks for watching and check the next one.